The keynote for WWDC 2024 has officially ended and boy was there so many new features and updates for not only iOS and iPadOS, but VisionOS, watchOS, macOS, and of course, all of the AI stuff. And so if you didn't get a chance to watch it all or there's just too much to process, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know uh, that happened at today's keynote. So let's start off with Apple Intelligence, which is what Apple is calling all of its crazy new AI features for again, iOS 18, iPadOS 18, and macOS Sequoia, which by the way, that is the name for macOS this year. AI is basically integrated everywhere in the operating system from apps to Siri. The rewrite feature lets you write something and then choose from different versions of what you've written with customizable tone and language. And proofread makes sure that you don't make mistakes checking sentence structure and grammar. And if you write something super long, you can create a TLDR with summarize. Are you tired of too many notifications? Well, thankfully, Apple Intelligence can prioritize which notifications are important and put them at the top of the notification section. With Image Playground, a new app from Apple, you can now feed a prompt and generate any image that you want. And it's not only just a standalone app, but it's also integrated into the Notes and Messages app. Images can include people, so you can make custom images that you can send to contacts, but don't worry, Apple doesn't make these look real. You can choose animation, illustration, or sketch styles. In the Notes app, you can have AI create useful sketches that go along with what you've written. Plus on iPad, your rough sketches can now be turned into more polished images. There's a whole new Genmoji feature that lets you generate any emoji just by tapping in a description so that you're no longer limited to using the emojis that are just in iOS. Genmoji works just like regular emojis and can be used in all of the same ways. In Photos, AI makes search way better and it's able to remove background objects with a cleanup tool. There's also a feature for creating custom memory movies based on your photos and videos. Siri is also getting smarter with Apple intelligence and you can have uh, Siri understand context from request to request. It can also be able to have a more conversational tone. And if you fumble over your words and you need to go back and say something correctly, you can actually do that and Siri will still understand your request. You can type to Siri if you don't wanna talk and there's a whole new Siri interface that adds these glowy edges to the screen when Siri is activated, which looks super cool. Siri can answer questions about the iPhone, iPad, or Mac, so it's basically like having an Apple support person available at any time. Plus, Siri can take actions within apps so it can complete hundreds of new actions. You can also use commands like send photos from the party on Friday to my mom or play the podcast that my friend recommended. Siri features are also extended to search so that you can use casual language to find any of your files, emails, or photos. Apple is also working closely with OpenAI and integrating ChatGPT 4.0 across iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. Of course, if you want to use ChatGPT in that command, Siri will ask for your permission pretty much every time. And if you send a photo, for example, it'll say, are you sure you want to share this photo with ChatGPT in order to complete your command? Now, all of the Apple intelligence stuff that we've just talked about, that's all processed locally on device. So you're gonna need at least an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, and you're gonna need an iPad or Mac with an M series chip. So that's just Apple intelligence. Of course, there were also non-AI related updates to all of the platforms. iOS and iPadOS 18, you can now customize your home screen layout. You can move icons and widgets wherever you want, add spaces between them, and change the size and color with tints of every icon. Control Center has been split up into multiple pages. This looks really, really cool. You just keep swiping through them and you'll have different pages for media controls, for your smart home, whatever the case may be. And you can also customize the layout of your Control Center and developers can add features into Control Center for their applications. Also, if you're really sick and tired of the lock screen toggles of the flashlight and camera, you can actually change that. Finally, you can put it to whatever you want. Mail and messages, Apple Music and the Notes app, whatever the case may be, you can change those toggles on your lock screen.
We talked a little bit about messages earlier, but you can now use tap back with any emoji or sticker. You're not limited to the pre-configured options that Apple has had in the past. Uh, you can also add italics, you can underline and strike through to messages, and add text effects like jitter, ripple, and explode to just single words. You can now finally schedule messages to be sent later, so if there's a birthday happening tomorrow and you just remembered the night before but it's a little too early to wish them a happy birthday, you can send that later on, have it scheduled and sent out, and if you happen to not have any service but you can connect to the satellite, you can now send text messages or just regular iMessages through the connection via satellite, and it's not just limited to conversations with emergency services. Along with transcriptions, the Notes app has a new Math Notes feature that can automatically add up numbers and even do complex equations. Speaking of the iPad, the Calculator app is finally on the iPad, and I finally understand why it's taken so long. I mean, it's been like 13 or 14 years, but this new iPad Calculator app is incredible. There are so many things that you can do on it, and it's just kind of mind-blowing that we finally have the Calculator app on the iPad. Just the little things in life. Also, uh, there's a new smart script feature for your handwriting. If you're using an iPad and an Apple Pencil and you have chicken scratch, it can now fix that. And basically, as you're writing, it'll fix your chicken scratch to make it more legible, which is really cool. And just a few quick rapid fire features here. Apps can now be locked behind Face ID. The passwords portion of the settings app is now its own standalone app. And you can access these passwords on PC if you need to do so. Maps has a new topographic view. Photos has been redesigned, the AirPods Pro are getting better, and you can now send cash to someone privately using Tap to Cash so that you no longer have to share your phone number or email with them. There's tons of iOS 18 features that we didn't get a chance to talk about, but we'll be going over them in this channel at some point, so just be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos, or you can go catch up on everything on MacRumors.com. macOS Sequoia is getting most of the iOS 18 features that we talked about already, but one major new feature is the iPhone mirroring feature, which lets you control your iPhone with your Mac. And by control, I mean full control. Your iPhone can be locked, and rooms away, and you can access all of your apps and iPhone content. You can type on your iPhone using your Mac's keyboard, and you can even drag and drop files between the iPhone and your Mac, which is absolutely nuts. Apple is improving window tiling, so if you drag a window to the edge of your screen, macOS Sequoia automatically suggests a tiled position on the desktop, and you can arrange tiles side by side or put them in corners, and it's just basically a way to have more apps in view at once. Moving on to Vision OS 2, there's a lot of things that I feel like Apple just didn't have time to announce, but one of the major things that I'm excited for is that any photo that you've taken on your iPhone or whatever can now be turned into a spatial photo, which is fantastic. It'll just automatically turn it from a 2D photo into that 3D type spatial photo. And there's a new hand gesture for doing things like adjusting volume, seeing the time and checking the battery level, and Mac Virtual Display is now not only getting a better resolution and a larger size, but it's equivalent to basically being two side-by-side -side 4K displays. In watchOS 11, a Vitals app shows your key health metrics like heart rate and lets you know if things are changing with a daily health status. And for the super fitness oriented, training load is a complicated new algorithm that measures how the intensity and duration impact your body over time. TVOS 18 has a new insight feature, which is basically Amazon X-Ray, but it tells you who's currently in that scene and what song is actually playing. And you can add that song to your Apple Music library if you want to, which is also really cool. And Apple is improving enhanced dialogue to improve vocal clarity over music and loud action scenes. So that's really just a key overview of a lot of the features that Apple talked about. But of course, again, there are so many. And I wanna hear from you. What do you think about everything that Apple showed off? Let me know in the comments down below. What was your most favorite thing that they showed off? And of course, what is the thing that you're super excited to get your hands on? Let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.